If you're anything like me, you've spent a lot of time training. You've invested a lot of money into making yourself go faster. Maybe investing in some aerodynamic wheels or going the whole hog and investing in an aerodynamic frame. But what if you chuck the rule book out the window and you, well, went for something not quite so conventional? Today we are heading up north to a motor racing circuit which is normally home to British motorsport and motorcycle racing. Today however, engines have been replaced with human power. Welcome to Darley Mom. This is home of an event that the British Human Powered Club are running. And I'm hopefully going to get the chance to, well, get in a bike that's made for speed. Yeah, in a bike. So what will I be riding in today? This is a recumbent bicycle. It is a bicycle where the rider lays back in a reclining position. This allows the rider to distribute their weight across a large area, which in turn makes it more aerodynamic. This is a non-fared Raptor recumbent, one that you may be familiar with. Up front, there is a 20 inch wheel and a 70 tooth chainring. And at the rear, we've got a 26 inch wheel with a standard mountain bike gearing. Then you move to this. This is the Formula One of recumbents, surrounded by a carbon fiber shell, which allows the rider to travel at over 50 kilometers per hour at just 200 watts. This is exciting and something I've never, ever done before. Before I get going on a recumbent, I think it's best that I learn from one of the professionals. So I'm going to meet Barney, who's part of the British Human Powered Club Association, or club member, and you're going to talk me through, hopefully, Morning, how, to get, how to get me through riding a recumbent and then to potentially racing one. Yeah, we're going to set you off. Immediately, we'll get you going. Okay. Tricycle. Guaranteed easy, guaranteed smile. It just goes where you want it to go, simple controls. Yes, it doesn't look like I can uh, well, fall off that one. At real high speed, you'll lift a wheel. Even idiots might be able to roll them, but I'm sure you'll manage today. Okay, and then when, once I've done that, if I can. We're gonna introduce you to my low racer. Right. So this is a little bit different. It requires balance, but you're a cyclist. We know with a big smile, you'll be happy, you'll get away. It's all sorts of different stuff that you've not experienced before. It's got a tiller for steering, it's got front wheel drive, it's got a 70 tooth chain ring. All of that seems foreign to a normal cyclist. Yes. But this is dead easy and we'll get you going and we'll have you smiling and riding by the end of the day. Right Barney, helmet's going on. I'm ready to go, I'm all yours. Dead easy. So this machine, Sit in the seat, yep. handlebars, which will steer both front wheels. You've got a, a, a steering rod to each wheel. Conventional bicycle brakes, breaking a hub in each wheel. So that's the left hand brake, right hand brake. Perfect. You have uh, thumb end, bar end shifters. So that's your front mech up here, currently sat in the middle ring, which will be great to set off. And a rear mech here. So just the conventional Shimano thumb shifters. All we do, We'll point it down this little side road here, one foot each side at the front, sit back into the bike, apply some brakes, look up where you want to go, and it's away. You'll be able to ride off down here and spin round through the cones. Dead easy. Right, first go. Easy way back. Oh, thought it feels like getting in an armchair. Should be ready just to roll away. Ready. Brakes applied. Brakes and off. Off we go, first go on a recumbent. Now give us some stick and you'll be able to get right through those cones. Oh! Right, I'm up to speed now. It's a bit weird being so far to the floor. It kind of feels like I'm riding a go-kart. 
Just pedaling it. The other one that's terrifying is it's the balance I'm slightly worried about. But let's do it. I'm, re I'm ready, just nervous. <laughs> now this looks like a fair bit harder to do. So this, it'll take a little bit of learning, but we'll get you away in this no problem. The secret is to smile. Okay. <clears throat> so long as you're enjoying it and smiling, you'll manage this. Okay, I'm a big smiler. What we'll need though, is we'll need to lend you a pair of these elbow pads. Right, I'm gonna need these. You're gonna need these. <laughs> In the event you do fall off this, the first thing that's likely to hit ground is your elbows. Yeah. Not a lot of any protection on there, so generally, most of us race in the club with a bit of body armor on, and it just, just helps. It means you're not so nervous of falling off. Right, I'll get these on then, mate. You get those on, and then we'll talk you through getting the bike going. Got you padded up? Yep. If you apply the right brake before you, you drop in. Right brake. Seat over. So step just, up over, yeah, slide sit in. in. The middle of the seat, slide in. Slide in. It's comfy. Re relax, happy. I'm, I'm relaxed, nervous, yeah. but happy. What we do is we start with your right footed. Yep. With the right pedal fairway up. What we need you to do is to pick something up in the distance. Okay. A telegraph pole or a tree. Yeah. And we need you to look up at that. And it's a good, confident push off with that foot. Don't worry too much about getting the other up. Get yourself a really good push. Release the brake. Go and smile. All right, here goes Barney. Big smile. Be ready to catch me. <laughs> okay, it's quite difficult. To f it's a lot more difficult than it looks. Uh, you're looking, yeah. Okay, one more go, Barney. You ready? Yeah, we'll do this. It second, second is a charm, isn't it? Don't, don't absolutely worry about your pedals. They obviously looks. Just off you go and away. Yes, yeah, smile. Oh, uh, smile. Smile. I'm smiling. I'm not balancing. Go. Look where you want to go now. Smile. Look up. That's it. Through you go. Crashing. Crashing. Right. <laughs> Look up. Smiles applied. Aim for the camera. Aim for the camera. There we go, racing start mastered. I'm getting settled in now. Yeah, well, we've got the racing start mastered. You look like you're happy. I'm definitely happy. This you're smiling, off the face. you're getting the speed up. I think it's time we put you in the one lap time trial. And the result of that is, so long as you complete the one lap time trial, you'll be ranked as a British rider in the recumbent racing championships this year. Oh, I want to do well, my competitive nature is, is in there. I'm fighting, I'm fighting, I'm ready to go. Nice big long straight, you'll be loving it. What speeds do you reckon we'll make on those? Um, I reckon you'll be lucky if you make 20 miles an hour because you're still a bit wobbly and a bit nervous. Yeah. Um, this bike usually makes speeds about 25 in a one lap time trial. Um, yeah. All right. Other guys are going to be doing 40 miles an hour. Okay. Something to aim for in the so future. Middle of pack. Middle of pack. <laughs> I was sitting here watching the racing, but why, recumbents are the fastest bikes in the world, right? Yeah. But why are they not in the Tour de France? They've been banned by the UCI, um, and it's a ban that goes back to the 1930s, mm. when it was proven that amateur riders could ride as fast as the pros if they took aerodynamic advantages, and we're just continuing to accept those aerodynamic advantages and have fun. So is the um, like triangle, like the diamond shape, uh, traditional bike, that is the UCI rule, isn't it? UCI rules, very, very strict about the diamond shaped bicycle, yeah. and we accept anything. Yeah. People do come and race UCI bicycles here, and you may see some today, but we also accept tricycles, bicycles, and primarily the recumbent position, lying down where you cut through the air a lot more easily. And I've just had a little go on it, and they are incredibly quick for, well, it's the same amount of power I put out on a traditional bike. I'm going a lot faster in a recumbent. But then it goes from the one I've learnt on, which is the non-fed, and then we get to the fed, the streamliners, and that, well, is a whole different beast, isn't whole, it? Whole different game, and you know, the work we're doing with London South Bank University at the minute, they're looking for speeds of 90 miles an hour. 90 miles an hour? Off power outputs of 350 watts. Mm. 
The course that I'm taking on is a 2.2 kilometer circuit. It's made up of three tight corners with a pretty tough uphill headwind section on that back straight. So how fast can I go? Right, we're gonna put all my training to good use now on a time trial on three different bikes. I'm gonna start off with the trike and Barney's gonna set me off. I'm ready, mate. Three, two, one, go. Oh, we're off, we're off. Slow start. Pedal. Right, next up, it's the two-wheeled unfed. Three, two, one, go. Right, we're off. Up a gear. Right, second lap done with a time of 3.57. It's a lot faster and I was just getting hang on the corner in. It does put a smile on your face though, I have to say. It is really, really good fun. Right, next, it's the Streamliner. The fastest of the lot. This is a fully encapsulated carbon recumbent trike. It's a Velomobile. It's got two 20 inch wheels on the front and it's got one 26 inch on the back. The drive chain goes under the chair. It's got a fairly conventional mountain bike gear system with twist sh shift. And then on the top, you've got a race hood to keep it really aerodynamic. You've got this little flip up to keep with the ventilation because trust me, those things get pretty hot inside. But to me, it looks like, well, a big yellow missile. So when we start getting into the uh, interior of this, it's gotta be one of the most perfect touring machines because you can fit and store so much kit and even food in the back there, in the tail. And then when we look at the front here, you've got indicators, you've got even a horn. And to the side, you've got your light systems and your bike computer. But it's similar to a canoe, but on land, I guess. It's amazing. If I break it, I pay for it. That's my rule. Yeah, yeah. It should be fine. It might be a bit. So there's okay. shoulder pads here that you can lean. You can lean. Lean on. Yeah. yeah. And elbow pads there. Just oh, it's it. nice being clipped in. Ooh. Yeah. So with the race cap, you just need to stick the velcro. Yeah. Down. Right, velcro. The velcro under. Yeah, it just sticks underneath. It feels like I'm getting in a World War II bomber. Feels like I'm going to be shot out of a submarine. Roof closed. It's a bit surreal being in such a small capsule-like machine, but it is an amazing feeling. Right, let's have a first go, shall we? Woo! Okay, James, you ready for this one? Yeah, I've seen this in the Tour de France, and I never thought I'd get the chance to get in one. It is quite surreal being in this little capsule. Yeah, this is, and you saw how fast it went in the, alongside the Tour de France riders. Yes. Need to remember, you've got three big corners here. First one is downhill, so as you ease off the pedaling, there's no air braking. This thing will keep flying through the air at whatever speed you're at. So just take it easy. You've got the big hairpin, go wide on the big hairpin, and when you come into the final corner down here, you should have the opportunity to really power up, yeah? All right, I'm ready, Barney. It's not yours. It's been crashed, it's been raced, <laughs> it's been rallied, but we don't want you to do either of them. No, okay? I'm ready to go, mate. So, are Set we ready? Off. Three, two, one, go. And I'm off. Off the start line, slow start. Woo! Picking up some good speed here now. Oh, 
Oh, Barney. That felt a lot quicker. Three minutes, 10. Oh. Is that fast? Yeah, 47 seconds quicker than you were on the two-wheel Raptor. 47 seconds. It's incredible the speed you can make. Yeah. And it's more when you're up on top of the pedals and you're on top of the speed, you just keep going. Yeah. Just it's cuts incredible. through the air. That is amazing. At the end of the day, I got to go in the fastest recumbent there, and wow, it was fast. I got it up to 60 kilometers per hour, nearly rolled it, but let's keep that one quiet. But with all the time trials done, I think we should have a look at the results. Right, Barney, thank you so much for an amazing day. What are our findings? Well, you did well. Amazed that you managed to learn to pick it all up today. But on the unfaired trike, four minutes, 29 seconds. On the unfaired two-wheeler, which was a real skill to learn, three minutes, 57. Not bad. Then what you compared the yellow missile, the Quattro, three minutes, 10. Getting better. But on the real fast, flat out performance on the white Milan, two minutes, 52. <sighs> So it just shows what aerodynamics can do. Fantastic performance. On behalf of the club, we'd like oh. to present you with one British Human Power Club racing jersey. Oh, I feel part of the crew. Thank you so much. Well, if you enjoyed this video as much as I did, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. Massive thank you to these guys, the British Human Power Club. I hope to be back soon. But if you want another video, why don't you click on Barney? Cheers, Cheers. buddy.